Hello and welcome to Vitush Academy Life Coding. Today I will show you a few tricks with Jupyter Notebooks, pretty much how to work with pandas, how to get uh, data sets which are already preloaded uh, pre in some of the libraries and how to use matplotlib. So let's start. First let's Im import the libraries that we are going to use. So import pandas spd import matplotlib dot uh, pyplot spot import stats model dot api ssm import math because this library would be also used and at the end in order to have nice matplotlib we need matplotlib in line. Here we press shift and enter. So Jupyter Notebook calculates this and gives us to, gets us to the next line. Okay, there is a problem. Obviously matplotlib pyplot is written like this. Okay, and stats model it's called stats models dot API. Okay. And matplotlib is also like this. Okay. So now everything is fixed. Now let's get the data frame. Data frame equals sm dot. If we press tab and wait a bit, it would come, but not always. Okay, this time. Okay, it comes. Data sets the data sets dot sunspots dot load pandas dot data. So Sunspots is some data of the many that are available here. You see ANES 96. They come from the Stats Models API library. So plenty of data. Here we even have Scotland. Well, I decided to use the Sunspots one because it's rather simple. It looks like this. If we press DF, this is how it looks. Here, the year is actually presented as a double, but this would be change later and we have sun activity 5 11 16 23 up to the 30,000 for example we can of course get for example the tail and the tail looks like this and also we can get for example the head and the head looks like this okay so let's imagine that we only want to to select the year we can do df dot year uh, no, df. And here we write the name of the column. It looks like this. And it also says tada. Uh, what we can do is we can also use sum and we can say sum df sun activity. And it would give us the sum of all the sum of activity. Of course, also average avg. Average is also actually like average. Okay, for the average we should use something else like this df sun activity dot mean and this is our average mean sun activity if we use year mean most probably we would get the middle year so between uh, 17,000 and uh, 2008 okay so for the sum we put it on the front for the average we put it on the end, uh, like this. Yeah. So let's continue. Um, let's take a look at the head, for example, this one here, and think how do we want to pretty much to get, let's say, only the third row and only the ear and the sensitivity plus. Uh, the fourth row also ear and sensitivity. How do we do it? It is there are quite a few ways in Python to do it, not only one. So we can do df df dot columns, and here we use our lists. It's called cutting list cutting or something like this. Nest. I uh, just forgot the correct name, but this is what we use. And for example, if you use df columns like this, let's see what it's going to give us. Okay, gave us actually the first and the second column of our uh, data frame 
So if we, for example, use this, it would give us everything from the first, from the zero to the second, from the beginning to the second, but we also only want the first. And in order to select the corresponding rows, the third and the fourth, we should give something like starting from the third and ending to the fifth. So this is it. Mm. DF, DF columns. Let's select press once again. Nope. So in order to make it like a bit more interesting, uh, we are going to change the index to take the ear column as an index and we are going to drop the index. So what are we going to do in general is the following. We are not going to drop the index, we are only going to replace it with the ear. So we can say pd index sm.tsa.date tools dates from range and here we can say our index is from 1700 to 2008, this is where we get this data from, 2008, and then we can say the following, df.index equals index, and of course let's see how the df looks, okay, it realized that we are speaking about date, so it gave us this, so as a next step we can simply say to the data frame that we only want the year as an index, so this way we can say the following, for example, index equals uh, pd dot tap to, um, to date time, the first one, and then we say index format would be um, this one, month, day, and then year. And we're going to stringify it only to ear. And yeah, let's see. Index. Index looks okay. It's now currently this one. Great. And if we go to DF, mm, it looks still the same because we hadn't changed it. But what we should do is actually go DF index equals index and now go to the df and this is what we got okay so here if we go back and we copy our column let's see what would it be exactly it would be exactly what we wanted from here 170323 700436 700323 700436 that's great and there are like quite a few things that we can also do with these data frames Pretty much uh, another way to get this is with iLock. We can say DF iLock. Here, if you press Shift and Tab, we get a lot of information about DF iLock. Mm -hmm. The whole documentation stuff. And what we can do is pretty much the following. We can say, I need the third to the fifth uh, row and the first to the second. Mm, column in a way, of course not in these parentheses but in these ones. Yeah, and for example we can also multiply this if we want to by let's say 1000 and the next time we ask DF would it be multiplied by 1000? No, because uh, we haven't saved it. Uh, yep, there should be a way to save uh, to save what we just did. So let's uh, let's try like this equals that. And jackpot, it just happened. Here you see they are multiplied by 1000. If we simply, let's say, try to add one. Yes, they are here with one. And if we want to add point one, the point one appears. So this is a way to yeah, do something with our pandas. I mean, pandas is like Excel, but a bit better, someone could say. Okay, so at the end, let's uh, use some Matplotlib stuff. Let's see the sun activity. 
and let's copy it from here not to have any problems dfsunactivity.plot and it is plotted looks okay somehow and it doesn't look as good because uh, of these things here let's say this one minus uh, 2000 I think would be quite okay or 20,000 Mm, okay, let's simply write uh, okay here 1000. 1000 is okay, and then this thing with the 13,000 would be better if uh, okay, it would be better if we simply write here zero, not to assume, yeah. Okay, we got uh, some zeros here, but the rest of the data looks okay. And what we can further do is uh, we can put like some labels. For example, we can say pot dot label. I'm pressing tab, but it's a bit slow. And we can write here sun activity levels. And pot dot x label. We can write here ear. And let's see, something happened and it's okay, we have here ear and we have here sun activity levels. Okay, that's so far so good. Uh, let's name our file mm, sunspots.load pandas rename because this is the database that we're using and let's make our own database and try to see what's how we can plot it not now our own database but our own data frame so let's call it dfx not df and it would be pd dot uh, data frame of course with big ones okay and in this okay in this data frame what we are going to do is uh, we are going to use four different values that that would be www xx y y z z this would be four lists so to say four different uh, lists with four different uh, values in each of the lists so series and let's say here for n in range 100 this is how we are going to add data to the list so we can say w will be equal to n and we will add of course here the w's and then we can make it a bit interesting if n module of 13 then is equal to zero then we're going to append something here like x equals n times 2 or y equals n to the power of 2 or z equals n times 10.5 for example yes and of course append everything here so not ww but xx append x y y append y mm, and then z append z okay let's see at the end for example how our zz looks Okay, we have zeros at the beginning, then 136, because 14 times 10.5 is probably, or 13 times 10.5 is 136, then we have 273, and then we have lots of other stuff. That's good. Let's take a look for the same for the Igor Kigor. Igor Kigor is uh, some power, so 13 to the power of 2 is 169, I guess, yes. To 8289 so let's plot this data how do we plot it well we should add it first to the DFX and we can say W equals WW mm. XYZ equals 
that, that it was supposed to be X, but on a German keyboard it's a bit different. Still everything okay now. And what we can do now is we can say dfx plot fx dot plot and this is how it looks like okay the y is the one going up really quickly because it is to the power of two then we have the x which is almost overlapping with the y which is not what we want so we are going to change it for example and we the end we have the w okay the w is equal to n and the x is going to be changed to something like say not so overlapping or the n should be changed to not so overlapping yeah let's change the n to a linear one okay i mean the w is changed to a linear one then everything looks okay this one could be 1.4 just to make a bit more difficult different and we got some data here so that is looking good. What we can do is we can put instead of W, which doesn't mean a lot, we can say n times 10. Instead of x, we can say n times 2. Instead of y, we can say n to the power of 1.4. Or let's use the Python way of power. And instead of z, we can say n times 10.5. Yep, quite okay. Uh, we can make a bit uh, bigger our thing. Let's say what we can do is, for example, we can change the parameters of the figure. We can say pot rc params. Mm -hmm. And in RC params is obviously some kind of a dictionary, so with figure figure key and 10 10 we can do stuff and we can make it bigger if we don't make a mistake. Figure figure is not a valid RC parameter, really. POT RC params figure dot figure plus 10 dot 10. That's strange. Ah, yeah, figure dot fix size is actually. The param, so yeah, now it looks 10 by 10 and it's a bit more interesting. What we can further do is we can put like some uh, names of the label of the x and the y, and the code to do this is pot y label. Simply use tab, it's your friends, and name it values, and pot x label, it would be code n. Let's go. Mm -hmm. And for a reason, we got a tool, so which is kind of strange. I only plot once, but we got two. Okay, and the problem why we get two is uh, really interesting. DFX plot, and still we got two. Okay, the reason that this happens, we have one empty with the values in the n. Uh, Jupiter doesn't know that this should be associated with our dfx. It simply knows that it should do something with the pot fix size, so we put them in the back and magically it should be working. Yes, magically it's working. We have values and n here, which is pretty much okay. And last thing I'm gonna show with this uh, dfx is, for example, how to print uh, let's say the index is to list it's dfx dot index dot to list it's really beautiful python or pythonic way and this is it indexes are printed to list something more interesting that actually would be interesting for everyone studying supply chain would be uh, pretty much what would happen if we want to add one column which is the sum of all of these a like x y and z how do we do it is it easy to do it i'm saying it's about supply chain because this was like one of the standard tasks that supply chain people were given let's say make a sum column and do it uh, 
really easily and quickly. I mean, in Excel, it's really like uh, the easiest task possible. In Pandas, it's also quite possible if you know how to do it. What we can do is we can say, okay, for example, dfx, and then your name of the column would be like a letter that we didn't have. Uh, let's say it would be nsum, and the nsum would be dfx.sum. We have to mention the axis, and axis is 1 because it's the columns. And then we can put like a numeric column, numeric only, equals true. In this case, we don't have to put it, but if we had like something which wasn't numeric only, we would have to put it, but in this case, I'll just put it just to show what's happening. And let's see what would happen if we write here dfx plot. Okay, this is the ensum which goes like this. Now imagine that you have to provide the ensum, let's say, five times, so to say. After this, build the ensum once again, and once again, and once again, and once again. So it would go here, 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 and probably somewhere here. But if we write it on one plot, it would be really interesting to see. So this is actually some standard loop like this for n in range, let's say, five. Uh, we would say dfx and some and here we would say stringify n plus one so this would be n sum then we have n sum zero so it should be actually n sum plus two so it should be the next one should be n sum two and we would say dfx dot sum pretty much what we write here Mm -hmm. And let's plot it as well. But yeah, n not every, not after each loop, but at the end. So shift and tap, and this is how it looks. And some, and some two, and some three, and some four, and some five, and and some six are provided here. So pretty much this is so for today. And yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you learned something interesting and have a great day. Bye.